You were the chosen one. It was said you would destroy the Sith, not join them, bring balance to the Force, not leave it in darkness. Here's your look at the new Hot Toys Star Wars. This is the Obi-Wan Kenobi Deluxe Version 6 scale figure. The product code for Obi-Wan Kenobi is MMS478, and don't worry, you don't have to join the dark side to pick this one up for yourself. You can head on over to Alter Ego Comics right now and order yours today. To get this review underway, the first thing we're going to do is measure off Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, stopping the Ultra Measuretron to the top of his head, I can't say I'm really surprised, but I'm surprised by the fact that it's exactly 12 inches in height. Normally, they're just a little under 12 inches. Normally, they're just a little over 12 inches, but Obi-Wan Kenobi is exactly 12 inches in height, which works out in centimeters to be 30.6, about 31 centimeters in height. The first thing we'll have a gander at is the rectangular display stand that comes included with the figure. From the top, there's not a whole lot exciting going on until you add the other two things. Don't worry, we'll talk about those in a second. The top is rather shiny, funny enough, because it is going to be something that's going to be covered, although you can still see the sheen to the black plastic as a banding that represents just the sides of the display stand. I mean, really, as it goes, just as this is, it's not a bad stand, even if you want to leave stuff off of it. I like that at least you have the functionality to be able to take the cards off. I know I keep talking about these cards. You haven't even seen them yet. Uh, you don't have to necessarily... The base doesn't have it permanently attached. That's one good thing I really like about these. The base itself is a two-tone black, more of a dark gray on the, do the bottom of the banding. And then, like I said, the shinier black along the top. There's a front placard that has Star Wars and... Obi-Wan Kenobi there on the front. Could it have, yes, said Star Wars Revenge of the Jedi? Yes, it could have. But instead, they just went with a defaulted banner of Star Wars. And the character at least featured down below. I like that. You can remove the placard for no other reason than probably just the way it was constructed so they can use this for other figures. It doesn't really have a practical purpose for your own personal collection to be able to remove this and uh, take this off unless they had given you a secondary placard which maybe could have had the Star Wars Revenge of the Jedi. Would have been also nice that they could have done this lettering other than something simply other than just silver. 
you know, maybe like an outline in red or something like that. But either way, that is your display stand. Nothing really too specifically exciting about it. It still has the standard cradle, uh, which will support uh, Ben when you're putting, putting him on top. Then, of course, we can beeline it, or I guess it's so much more so just a like a minus sign over our way to the two supplied index cards that come included with the stand. I mean, from the back, it kind of looks like something you would have used for public speaking. These are made of a kind of a laminated plastic. They are definitely not paper. There's a little bit more density to them. And they depict two generic scenes. Based on most of the sites that I've looked up, as I certainly like to do my research before hitting that record button, they are very generic in their descriptions to what these places are. I mean, they could really have been anything. So doing a little bit of research, um, from what I can tell based on some of these scenes, I think this is the flooring from Planet Utapa, where basically Obi-Wan goes uh, pursuing after General Grievous and their battle starts. This is kind of the area in which Obi-Wan sneaks up on Grievous and the battle commences from there. It does seem like at least that's the flooring from it. It's not from Mustafar, Mustafar, uh, which uh, I think some people have also mistaken this for. I think it's actually from Planet Utapa. Um, now this will go on to, both actually will go on to the display stand. You just want to take the cradle neck off, just line it up like that, and uh, you can just attach that back into place. Again, I like for the fact that these are permanent. It's a pain in the butt, yes, that they shift around the way that they do, but I'm glad that they do give you the options that if you want to leave them off altogether and just have just a neutral black stand, you can go that route as well. So it does come with the base bottom from, again, what I'm guessing to be Planet Tapa. And then the other place, the only other place I can think of that has terrain like this is Mustafar, where he, of course, fights Anakin. Not quite to the bitter death, but he certainly fights to the bit, one of the slight bitter ends to one of the characters until, of course, he gets changed to Darth Vader. Um, it doesn't really necessarily look like the terrain. Granted, yes, Obi-Wan has the higher ground, but I think the lower ground look would be a little bit more ashier in color, slightly a little bit more darker gray. I've been trying to like pinpoint other places in the movie in which this it would be a terrain for it. Even thinking it would have been a continuation of Planet Utapa, basically, where he's fighting Grievous, but he never really gets to a soiled place, a place that has granite and little pebble stones like this. So again, I'm thinking it's from Planet Mustafar. I keep wanting to pronounce it incorrectly, Mustafar. Um, the thing is, though, it just looks like a random picture. It looks like they just went outside and took a photo of this terrain and just kind of laminate it to a card. The one thing I still hope, something of which I mentioned in the review of Thanos, is that they really need to get into the habit of vacuum forming these, vacuum forming these, where you'd be using a plastic, putting it over a textured terrain, and then the vacuum would suck the plastic over it. As a result, you would have actual ridges, actual lifts, and actual areas that would be higher in some and lower than others. This would just defeat the purpose of ultimately looking at a card that is so paper thin, literally, and the, the terrain really only looks good from the top view. I mean, again, if they went the route of vacuum forming these, you would at least have some of those pebbles, some of those stones sticking up. I know I'm spending a lot of time talking about terrain, but again, it's just one little more enhancement that they could do for a figure that, again, is over $200. You'd like to think that they could do a little bit more than simply just laminating a photo, which is essentially what they've done right here. This six scale figure release of Obi-Wan Kenobi is also the deluxe version. I'm gonna actually just run through the accessory difference between the deluxe version and the standard release. I obviously don't have the standard release, so basically everything you're gonna be seeing here for accessories, you'd slightly just wanna omit that out if you do decide to go the route of going standard. So the deluxe release, we'll look at the largest item first. He comes included with a rather, like again, large, this is a security hologram table. Uh, it's really neat. 
unfortunately it doesn't come with batteries so when you immediately get this the first thing you will want to do on your shopping list of things to do is pick up three AAA batteries and install them in the bottom area here there's an on and off switch projecting a rather bright light something of which again if you wanted to use it as a Star Wars flashlight even though it's not the brightest for dark areas I mean it does project quite a bit of a bright LED light we can put that over actually we'll, we'll put it to the side just yet i'm going to show you the detailing that's been done in here. a mixture of grays and silvers and blacks again a really neat looking display one thing again i like about some of the deluxe releases is they include accessories that you may not necessarily need then if that's not the case and you have to kind of ask yourself in your head am i ever going to display obi-wan kenobi with a hologram table if the immediate answer or slightly later on the answer is no then you can completely bypass the idea of just getting a deluxe version altogether and just get the standard release because again these are the only things that are going to be included with the deluxe version we're going to put the table down here just for a split second or we're going to revisit that in a second uh, because he does also come included with holographic images of uh, Darth Sidious. Again, a nice little representation of Darth Sidious. I like that they put the texturing in it and varying degrees of different blues. It's translucent blue, but you can see that the blue does change a little bit depending on what's on him, like his face and his hands, for example, a little bit different. I also like that they put the little ridges on there, like the projection of the hologram it has those little lines and ridges in there. A nice little representation, a smaller representation of Darth Sidious. The other thing he comes included with is a little of a little smaller version of Anakin. He's obviously a lot smaller because he's also on his knees uh, proclaiming and confessing his uh, his allegiances to Darth Sidious who of course would later then become the Emperor. A nice little representation. It stands out a little bit that Anakin's head of course has the brown because he's got the hair whereas Grievous is or Sidious is basically all blue but again it looks accurate to the way it did. One thing that's nice about it is that they're both hollow. You can look right deep into the chasm areas kind of looks like something from Doctor Who. Ideally you could even put an LED light up in those if you wanted to. You don't necessarily have to rely on the table and you can really do that for both of them. But let me show you what it looks like when you put them onto the table. Obviously with the light projecting the way it is the lights gonna run all the way up and again you get a little bit more of that translucency happening and a great job of having those little ridges, those little uh, little you see the little lines running through it. There's something about that that I just find so appealing. We're going to go ahead and take Anakin and put him also on there as well. As you could probably guess it, the light is a little bit brighter to the base. It works a little bit, a uh, little less in strength as it works further up to the tops of their heads. Again, do you necessarily need this in your collection? You don't? Well, you don't necessarily have to then get the deluxe version. You're not paying for things that you ultimately don't necessarily need. I like the fact that you do have this and you can pose some of your figures around that. So I venture closer more towards getting the deluxe version. But again, there's some deluxe figures that based on their extra accessories, I just simply said, said to myself, I, I'm never going to display those figures with those accessories. So I can just omit it altogether and save a little bit on money. The other thing he comes included with as the exclusive, probably something of which you may entertain more so for getting the deluxe versus the standard, is he does come with a little baby version of Luke Skywalker. What an adorable little baby. He's wrapped in swaddling clothes, more like just a little uh, blanket there. Nice texturing done to the blanket. And as you can see, little Luke Skywalker is sleeping away. All his little widow putty, little tiny little finger digits there cute little uh, little uh, Luke Skywalker there again are you gonna display the figure with this maybe no then you can just get yourself the deluxe version and one of the beauties of doing videos like this is to hopefully show you guys that you don't necessarily need to go the route of getting deluxe if you if you're fine to display Luke Sky or Obi-Wan Kenobi without the Luke Skywalker without the holographic table you don't have to go this route you can just go like I said the standard release 
before I get into the rest of the accessories, obviously we're going to want to see some close-up details to Obi-Wan Kenobi. So I figure we'll look at him next, then we'll have a look at the accessories that come included with the regular release of the figure. So of course he is dressed in his Jedi robe. The material itself is something I could probably describe as almost like a uh, almost like a faux suede. It feels very much like a faux suede. It actually feels very similar to the Heath Ledger Joker jacket, if you've managed to pick that up. I know I'm mixing uh, mediums and mixing up different franchises, but the material does feel very much like, uh, like a suede. Obviously, it would be a faux suede. It's something of which something you would have to worry about, I think, over the course of time, that the uh, the flocking that they would do to an organic or artificial, I should say, uh, synthetic suede could be something that after time you'll probably start seeing little bare spots starting to develop on it. It's unfortunately just the, it's just unfortunately the way things go when they use certain materials. Suede won't naturally have a, the balding problems that uh, synthetic suede usually goes the root of. As it stands right now, it's a nice soft feeling suede, but Again, over the years that you have this figure, you probably start seeing like little bald areas starting to form. Uh, the sleeves, the internal sections, the internal linings, I should say, of the sleeve, uh, are, are done with a different type of fabric, almost something like a nylon. What's disappointing, though, is that the nylon only seems to run the length of the sleeve. If you obviously look on the interior, you can see very noticeable seam lines in which they've taken the strips of this fabric and sewn it together. Um, you, if you don't have the robe open, you're obviously not going to see it as much, but even just a slight pull away as if he's reaching for his lightsaber, you're obviously going to see these big noticeable seam lines. I wish they had done as much service uh, to the interior of the robe as they did for the sleeves, because the sleeves look good. Uh, again, I just wish they could have done the same thing on the interior here as well. The face portrait does bear an uncanny likeness to actor Ewan McGregor, who played, of course, Obi-Wan Kenobi in the three Star Wars prequels. I think they're even discussing as we speak right now another Obi-Wan spin-off, which would be, unlike Han Solo, would be a character I would want to learn more about. Han Solo, I feel, just needs to remain a little bit in mystery. But the head portrait is really good on this figure. Um, I don't feel like I have necessarily any complaints. Uh, it does have one thing that under certain angled conditions does change a bit. It's his bottom lip. People have commented at times it does kind of look like he's sticking out his tongue. It's kind of the same thing as Chris Evans' Captain America. Something about that bottom lip underneath. Ironically enough, it's also another character that happens to sport a beard. There's something about the bottom lip underneath a mustache that, if not done right, does kind of look a little jarring. Here, I think it works a little bit more successful on Obi-Wan than I thought it looked on the Chris Evans uh, Captain America. Like I said, that, that portrait on this is uncanny. The likeness is definitely there. You can see all the imperfections, the little moles, little freckles, little spots that actor Ewan McGregor would actually have. They didn't feel the need necessarily to add those specifically for Obi-Wan's character. Going back again to the source material, uh, the coloring is also quite good, except for maybe that they could have added some additional lighter in the movie, depending on what lighting he's got, for example, when he goes and fights General Grievous, for example, the light, he's got natural sunlight hitting him. And you can see a little bit more of the kind of reddish, very light reddish brown hairs showing on his mustache, his beard, and specifically also in his hair. Here they've gone really more the darker roots. Again, you could depict this depending on what scene you're looking at. Mustafar, when he's fighting Anakin, his hair and beard looks a little bit darker. When he's fighting General Grievous, then it's almost the reverse of that. His mustache, his beard, and his hair seem like it's slightly a little more red, a little bit lighter in color. So again, it's just specific to how you want to display Obi-Wan Kenobi. What angle, like what scene you're, you would put the character necessarily in. The coloring, like in the movie, would change, and of course, depending on what light source you're using for displaying your figures in, in your detolfs or on shelving, the lighting would drastically change depending on what light source is hitting him. But a really good overall head sculpt. I'm very happy with how this one turned out. 
Well, we can go back a little bit to the rest of uh, his outfit because we kind of started with the Jedi robe. Quickly, I want to talk about the, uh, the hood. The hood, in a strange change of events, normally Hot Toys would put wire frames. They would put wire frames on the interior of the hood. I'm of two schools looking at this. As you can see, I barely did any effort right there to drape the hood over top of Obi-Wan's face. And it does have a natural drape to it. Something that wires, if you are bending wires first and then you want to go to a relaxed look for the, the hoods, often then you'll have like really sharp angles to it. Just it doesn't sit as well because it's got that wire frame inside. So having no wire frame actually works to your benefit. Still though, the other end of me, the other side is still thinking that this guy could have had a wire frame. I know I'm almost even now arguing my own point that I made. Wire frames at least give you full control. If not for that, you're at the mercy of how this naturally drops. Every single time, like a new snowflake, it's going to change every single time you put the hood on him. You have to adjust. And it may not always look the same. It may not look always right. And it will cause you to have to go back and change it again. Wireframes would obviously fix that problem because the hood would always look the same. The takeaway from it, though, unfortunately, negatively, is then when you are draping the hood, sometimes wireframes do, don't allow for natural draping to happen. And also, even when you're putting it onto figures' heads, if you have a wire that's in there, and if it's been bent or manipulated before, when you then drape the hood back over top of the figure, like I'm doing right now, the wire frame sometimes will be even more of a nuisance. So again, take it with my own opinion, just take it as a grain of salt. Uh, I don't know which I would actually have preferred. There are positives and negatives to both points. The positive of not having a wire frame is it drapes naturally. That's good. If you're somebody that likes control and being able to specifically say, okay, this part of the hood needs to bend this way, and this needs to bend, I need to have it look exactly like the scene. Well, unless you're gonna be doing this all afternoon, draping the hood until you get the proper look and then quickly putting it into the display case and closing up shop before it falls and drapes a different way, then the wireframe, yes, would probably be fitting you probably a little bit better. Wireframe would allow you to have a little bit more control with how you can then display the figure's hood. I suppose for looking at the rest of the figure, I can go ahead and take the Jedi robe off to show you that he does have a full completed outfit underneath. Underneath here, he's got his beige color tunic, of course, and then he's got his uh, slightly more khakier beige pants and a pair of faux leather boots. These are a red, uh, like I said, synthetic leather. Although I, I will say that the leather looks good, it looks like real leather should. Um, one thing though, and not to certainly bog a review down with negative points, now as you can see, the way that the boot sits right here, so you know, it sits right here, or even just like looking on this side here, where it has a natural divot point, depending on how the fabric is sitting, may in time as it dries out, start developing splits. I'm seeing like, I could almost even imagine a split developing right there. Uh, I've seen some reviewers actually uh, advocate the idea of uh, artificial, like vinyl and artificial leather should be something that you wanna maybe take care of go in there with like a, a cream and you can apply it. Uh, you can actually buy artificial like vinyl for specifically like couches and stuff like that where you can put it on figures like this just to prolong um, fabric like this from drying out. The quicker it dries out, the quicker you start developing these little split lines where these creases develop, especially like right here, right around where the boot belts, there's a little belt around the, uh, the ankle area there. That I could see as a place where bending the feet back and forth, you probably start seeing a little crack right there. I know I'm talking about things down the road, but it's obviously stuff that you want to factor in when you pick up expensive figures like this. There's the undersoles of Obi-Wan's shoes. Um, I don't know if you actually know this, but even in the film, it says Lucasfilm LTD and it says Hot Toys Limited. Didn't, you, didn't, you didn't know that? Okay, maybe that part's not true. 
One thing I also think that Hot Toys has done a great job on for Obi-Wan Kenobi is his outfit. Looking at the tunic that was underneath the Jedi robe, getting a real close-up look at it, you can see there's a little bit of discoloration on the outer edges of where the shoulder meets the sleeve. You can see it's a slightly darker shade than the shades that are actually on the inside. And actually, even like if you peel away or not quite that you can peel away. If you just slightly move away the sections of his shoulders, you can see it's a little bit lighter of a color underneath this. Um, me specifically, when I look at this type of fabric, it actually reminds me of like the old textile fabrics that they would have had in Egyptian days where you would have imagined like a machine like stitching these, these cross sections together giving you an almost Egyptian looking fabric. I can almost even imagine some of the pharaohs wearing something like this. Getting a real close up look. Appreciation certainly can be had. I know head sculpts certainly go a long way, but I, when I pick up figures like this, I always marvel the fact that there's seamstresses out there and people that are picking up fabrics with the sole intent of making one six scale clothing. Can you even imagine somebody is making little tiny one six scale outfits for uh, a plastic representat representation of Obi-Wan Kenobi. It, it's still to this day is something that I find is just a miraculous concept. Somebody's making smaller clothing. But as you can see, like it, as a smaller representation of a one-to-one -one scale Jedi tunic, I mean, it looks dead on. Uh, really, again, love the fabrics that they use. Okay, well, stop talking about fabrics. He's also got his Jedi belt which looks like it's a faux leather. There's a couple of pockets on the sides and a pocket located there on the back. Um, there is also a holster that will uh, support the lightsaber hilt. I'll show you guys that in a second. And again, just a quick look at the legs. We looked at already the boots, but overall I'm very, very happy with the tailoring, the, the costume that was done to Obi-Wan's six scale release here. I don't know, is it a little weird that I get excited for six scale fabric? I mean, really, when it's all said and done, all of these things come together, marry one another, and produce a spectacular six scale figure. And I think it's important from time to time to just appreciate some of the care and some of the details that they put into us. Now, let's move away, obviously, because I don't want to scare you guys too much by talking about the textile fabrics of this six scale figure release. We'll, of course, talk about all the accessories that come included. We'll start with Obi-Wan's largest accessories and we'll kind of go from there. No, I didn't break this. He does come included with fragmented parts, as you can see, that have been cut and shredded by the lightsaber. Uh, one of the battle droids for the Trade Federation is an included accessory. And I guess you could do a makeshift job of kind of pasting together what it would look like before, of course, the lightsaber took its due diligence to it. Um, the arm is a separate piece. The head, obviously, is a separate piece. And then the torso section, which you can see here, just great job on the painting here. I would love to see Hot Toys re-release. Because I know at one point, I think Sideshow Collectibles had tackled a six scale rendition of a battle droid, but I'd love to see like a die cast Hot Toys battle droid. Anybody else feeling the same? No, anybody? A uh, really great job though. You can see the edged marks of where the lightsaber would have just sliced through it like a hot knife through butter. There's the internal mechanics of the battle droid. This is, again, this is something that's only going to really accent the display stand when you get Obi-Wan eventually, when you decide which display stand and which plate you want to go with. You can then just put the fra little fragmented pieces of the battle droid all around it. Uh, so he does come with uh, the torso piece of the battle droid. He comes with the head of the battle droid, which, as you can see, has had some slicing done even to the front of its, of its head. I want to say it's face, but I guess it wouldn't really be a face necessarily, it would be a head. And then it also comes with uh, a hand that's holding the E5 blaster rifle, one of the uh, armored weapons of choice for the Trade Federation. I don't know if they could probably reuse, it doesn't look like it's something that can be removed. I, I guess you could probably, if they had made this a removable, uh, an actual uh, blaster rifle that you could remove, you could probably give it to Obi-Wan Kenobi, but Obi, re Obi really does have enough stuff going for him. I don't feel now I want, want to take away uh, the weapon of choice for the battle droid, because, I mean, he's already seen enough uh, woes in his life. I'm not going to go ahead and take his blaster rifle either. So, again, a nice job done on that, grasping the trigger to his very last uh, functioning, I don't want to say breath, but... 
nice job there just to include pieces like this. I mean, really these, when it's all said and done, I mean, like looking at these three components here, this could also be included with the deluxe version, but kind of part of me is happy the fact that the standard release would get the, the, all the nice trimmings like this, literally trimmings like this. Uh, let's talk about some of the other things that he comes included with. Uh, he comes with his lightsaber, and I've already taken the liberty of actually installing it into the hand that comes included, specifically for holding the lightsaber. It's a bit of a prying fight between getting the lightsaber and into his fingers. You just have to kind of pry the fingers away to kind of get it wedged in there. Uh, his weapon of choice, the lightsaber, looks quite good. A couple of different ways that you can display this is uh, you can take the standard beam standard blade you can add that to the hilt and uh, it does a great job you know as a translucent plastic blade goes it's it's effective enough uh, you can also and uh, luke skywalker also include something similar to this a swooshing translucent i have to use my hand as as a tool to show you guys even though you can see obi-wan kenobi on the other side of that a translucent almost frosted like plastic just kind of give you that look that he's swooshing it through the air i do really like that uh, it does actually at attach to his belt unfortunately though if i just show you the figure here here's the belt section and here's where the lightsaber is now you'll see there's a hole on the side unfortunately as it is just now it doesn't attach to his belt magnets would have certainly fixed this problem quite easily actually if they put a magnet in the top and a magnet right here could have easily just attached it right there it's so a one bit of a pain in the butt unfortunately Hot Toys does include these little tiny screws. They give you two, and they're just supposed to... Let me just show you before I drop it. I certainly don't want to drop it. You just put the screw. It's very similar to a screw. It just kind of sticks in the top right there. And then from there, uh, there's this little groove, and you're going to take the screw and just... Almost saying screw downplays what it is. It's just basically like a peg, but... It kind of does look like a little tiny screw that you would find attached to the battery compartment. And like I said, that just sits on there. This is a bit of a nuisance, like I said, because unless you're putting these away immediately, if you change your mind while you're displaying the figure and say you decide you want to take that screw off, I keep again saying screw, take that off. If you don't put it away immediately, you're going to lose it. And then right off the bat, you get a problem displaying the hilt attached to obi-wan's belt could they have used magnets i think most definitely they could have used magnets it just would have fixed the problem so much it's such an easy fix magnet in there and a magnet there could have just attached that in place while we're also on the topic of small accessories he also comes included with the jedi com link a nice little representation and i'm sure when we eventually get the hot toys release of qui-gon jinn he'll probably also come with the little com link nice detailing done to it i can't help every time i look at this at think the com link figures that the phantom menace first came out with remember they actually sold a com link where you could actually put the figures on top every time i see this now and even all the subsequent times i've re-watched the film i always go back and think of the old Kenner uh, Star Wars, um, I think it was Kenner, the Phantom Menace uh, com links. I had one at one point, I don't know what I did with it, but if you ever wanted to cosplay, I mean, it's just the cheapest fix you know, possible is just to pick up the original uh, Kenner's com link, but it does come included with that. Now, I know I did take a break talking about lightsabers because there really is technically one other lightsaber he comes included with, and that comes attached to a hand that it comes attached to a forearm and in the forearm is a battery compartment you do have to install the batteries and don't worry don't worry the batteries are actually included with this six scale release of obi-wan kenobi but it's always a pain in the butt to you know unscrew that pop the button cell batteries in and you always i'm guilty of it always put the batteries the wrong way the first time it's just just the way it it's just the way it always goes i always put the batteries the wrong way but switching that on uh it does project a rather bright blue LED lights and then you can take these said beams the said said blades I don't know if you would call them a beam or blade I mean obviously if the lightsaber is more of a sword you would imagine this to be a lightsaber blade but you can see it projects quite the bright light for something so small inside the hilt here it shows even better actually when you take the swooshing effect 
and you just attach that into place just like that and you can see it doesn't project it all the way to the end although what's interesting about it it does on the very edge of the blade project still a beam of light here though it still is a little bit on the darker side gets progressively brighter as it gets to the closer bottom section of the hilt now unfortunately anybody who has collected these over the years any star wars aficionado who collects the six scale releases of these from uh, six scale companies like hot toys and sideshow collectibles i think it's really more hot toys that supply these these are always always a nightmare to pull out the original socketed arm and replace it with these uh, let me show you what's going on here let me just break down what's going on here you're gonna have to roll the sleeve up and you would think that they could have Velcroed or something on the inside, the inner sleeve here, but they don't. As a result of it, you have to kind of pull it up and it only goes so far. It stops and then the rest of it is just blind luck and hope. You can pull this out. What you essentially need to do is this sits on the inside. The bicep would be right here. You have to pull this out and then manually feed this back through. I think even Kylo Ren did the same thing. And I gotta ask myself, every single time I do this, every single time I review figures like this, I ask myself the very same question and I probably even pose it in the video. There's gotta be an easier way to do this. Even if I can understand the sleeve of the tunic, they obviously don't wanna have a big noticeable Velcro seam there, but certainly, most definitely, on the sleeve inside, this brownish burgundy sleeve, could there not have been an easier way? Could they not have put a big, big line of Velcro right here, where you could just un-Velcro it, get right to the bicep, pull the, the arm out, pop this back in, and just close this off? You from the sleeve coming down, you wouldn't even see it. I mean, I get people want to have a tight sleeve, so I wouldn't support the idea of just making one slit down it, because as a result of it, this, this sleeve wouldn't sit close and tight around his wrist. But most definitely, they could have easily put Velcro on there. I mean, I not don't want to be criticizing the figure too much. Like I said, the figure does have really a lot of pros, but I feel like I would be doing myself a, do, a proper service to myself or really you, the viewers, without pointing out things that I would have changed. Like things, like I said, the hilt, belt, uh, the magnetized attachment to the belt seems like a simple quick fix. And adding a seam line on the inside of his sleeve certainly would fix the problem of having to put this in all the time. Something also too, I always take my batteries out of the forearm. So even having just to roll up the sleeve, I may even find myself permanently keeping this arm in there if I eventually get it in there. But the problem is then you have the hand and you'll have to swap the hand out, which I don't even think actually the hand is swappable. I think it's uh, I think it's something that is, well, maybe it is a, something, no, I don't wanna I feel as if it's, I didn't even take that off I feel like I would do some damage to it. I thought it might have been actually like the Iron Man light uh, in the repulsor blast where the light would actually just run through the forearm, out the wrist. I don't know if that's necessarily the case here, so I'm just going to leave it be. But really, the takeaway for all this, to make a short story long, literally, uh, again, I just wish Hot Toys would find a different, simpler means of swapping out forearms if they really want collectors to display their figures with light-up hilts like this. Having a look at the rest of Obi-Wan Kenobi's accessories, and so sorry, by the way, that I dragged down that part of the review with a lengthy uh, discussion about talking about his form and talking about the magnet in his, in his hilt. I personally still feel like, uh, you know, when people review figures, they should be critical. I mean, if there's things that they don't like about the figures, these are things naturally that any collector, as soon as you get things out of the box, out of the package, whatever it may be, you're obviously gonna have things that you wish the figure could have done differently. I think for a figure, an expected level of uh, your ex expectation, I think, is a little higher when it comes to the more expensive six scale figures like this. For the price point, there should really be a, a simpler fix, I feel, for changing out the forearm. There should be a simpler fix for adding the lightsaber hilt to his belt other than having to put a little, you know, a little screw point in there. There should really be an easier way to do that. So I don't feel like I'm being overly critical, just pointing out things that I feel should have been done differently. You may feel completely different and that's perfectly okay as well.
Okay, so let's have a look at the rest of his accessories. Really, rounding out the batch, the, the only other thing that we haven't uh, touched base on too much, speaking of touching, is actually his hands. Uh, we'll run through those now, right now for you guys. He does come with a pair of partially closed or gripping hands. Normally, this would be a time where I would discuss the... <sighs> slightly boring factor of having closed fisted but actually this is one figure that doesn't come with closed fists yay i don't really know why i would ever display obi-wan kenobi with closed fists apparently hot toys agrees he does come with a pair of closed uh, gripping hands i should say for wielding the lightsaber whether you prefer the lightsaber to be wielded on this side or you prefer it on this side you can do it with either side with the hands included just a talking point as well he does also come with a pair of partially relaxed hands that seems to be always my go-to when uh, if i'm not having a figure displayed with something i always like to go with a natural draping partially closed hand rather than always going with a closed fist and again i that's why i don't get the idea of closed fists with figures he does also come with a hand suited for holding the calm link let me show you how that works right now we just slide that in it's like a match made in heaven that fits perfectly the comm link. I love when companies specifically design hands for specific accessories. Sometimes companies would just simply give you a, a gripping hand and say, well, you know what? That you can use that for the comm link. It ultimately just looks awkward. It makes it look like he's holding like a baseball bat or a sub sandwich. No, I think specifically for cases like this, give us hands that are suited for holding these set accessories. And I think this is the perfect hand for doing that. So good job for Hot Toys for that. He also comes with a pair of, uh, you could say force hands, you could say jazz excited hands, or you could also say the hands for holding little tiny Luke Skywalker. Uh, even if you don't necessarily pick up the figure uh, in the deluxe version, but if you do end up ultimately picking up in the deluxe version, he does have the suited hands for holding it. I guess if you aren't picking up this rendition of him, these could simply just be force hands. Force hands. And then the other thing he comes with is uh, a rather unique thing that uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi does is that kind of uh, rabbit eye pointing at you pose where he's got his lightsaber up. Well, I did it at the beginning of this review with his lightsabers up here and he's pointing uh, out at, uh, well, actually what's, what's good though about it, if you do display the figure with the Atapu uh, uh, plate, uh, that is actually the perfect scene right there for that pose where he's ar about to square off with General Grievous. He actually uses this rabbit ear pointed hand and then he has the lightsaber drawn right above his like right at his face or right above his his head there and that's probably the pose i'm going to ultimately go with i think that's just a really cool neat way of displaying obi-wan kenobi obviously for displaying obi-wan kenobi you wouldn't be able to display anything really unless he had posability so we'll go ahead and talk about his posability right now his head rotates all the way around a current trend, it seems, is that uh, Hot Toys and many six-scale companies are dismissing the notion of using the separate head portrait on top of a neck. What, ultimately, what ultimately ends up happening is you see a really stark cut line where the head is attached to a neck and those two pieces are separate. Companies now are dismissing that, I think, in favor of a full head portrait attached to the full neck. So this is basically the head if you were to take it off. It's attached to a dumbbell ball joint. So basically you get a ball joint attaching to the uh, socket section of his neck. And then the other end of it, like a dumbbell, is attaching to the torso piece right here. So his head rotates all the way around. I did notice though, getting a packaging that his head feels a little on the loose side. It's not a case where the figure's head is falling out, but I did notice it is sitting a little loose. That might just be my figure. Uh, it does hinge up and down. You can angle it back and forth. Uh, he does have the upper torso crunch, waist swivel. His arms go out to there and you can bring him forward. You can bring him back. He has a swivel uh, right at the top where the shoulder basically connects, the bicep connects to the shoulder. And then he's also got a double hinge on the elbow. So that's always a good thing. Hands rotate all the way around. They hinge back and forth. And as for his legs, his legs split out. They go forward, they go back. He has a swivel on the top cut of the thigh, at, ra rather instead of the three-quarter cut, he's got it at the top cut of the thigh. Double hinge on the knee. The boots 
rotate. Now again, this is something I mentioned I probably at nausea at the beginning of this review. The feet do rotate. Just the type of fabric that they use, this simulated leather, I feel like if you're not properly caring for it, you're going to start seeing splits. Splits primarily happening right there, so you just want to be careful of that. It doesn't limit necessarily the posability on the feet. Rather, the feet are still fully posable, but I think the sacrifice in it is probably this section right here, where, like I said, you're going to start probably seeing cracks, splits, uh, over the course of time that you own these figures. The Star Wars Episode Three: Revenge of the Sith Obi-Wan Kenobi is actually my first figure into the realm of prequels. Admittingly so, having already collected New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, and Return of the Jedi six-scale figures, I really didn't want to go down the rabbit hole of prequels, because I knew if I did, there would be no stopping it. So initially I wasn't going to pick up this figure, but the frequent videos that I watched, the online images of Obi-Wan Kenobi, and just the fact that I thought Obi-Wan Kenobi was one of the best aspects of the slightly ill-fated prequels, which I wasn't as big of a fan of, ultimately sold it on me and I ended up picking this guy up for myself. I have to now come clean to the fact that how good this figure turned out, I probably will now find myself wanting to pre-order the Qui-Gon Jinn, and maybe go back and see if I could pick up the Anakin. After all, how can Obi-Wan take the higher ground if he doesn't have Anakin Skywalker to duel against? I could probably see myself probably picking up the Anakin Skywalker very soon as well. As for this figure, this figure turned out really good. There's not a lot of negative points I could make. In fact, as you probably saw in this review, only negative points I could really make is not necessarily about this specific figure, but just kind of the practices that Hot Toys does. Did they necessarily need to put a peg into the hilt of the lightsaber for him to hold it on his belt? Absolutely not. They could use magnets. They've done it in the past. I don't know why they didn't do it right now. And the thing with his arm is something that hasn't been exclusive necessarily to Obi-Wan Kenobi. They've done it with many of the Star Wars tie-in figures that have wielded a lightsaber hilt. There's got to be some easier way of changing out the forearm. I don't want to just guess where the forearm might be attached and try to pull it out with running the risk I'm going to do some damage to it. And there's got to be a lot easier of a way to separate also out the sleeve so you wouldn't have to just kind of guess where everything is. It should be much easier to see, much get much more access to get to those parts. And uh, I really think Hot Toys needs to do some changes when it comes to that. Other than that though, I'm very happy with how this figure turned out. And ultimately it will now cause my wallet to set out a big, let out a big cry or sigh. Because <sighs> I'm gonna probably have to now venture into the realm of the prequels. Something which I didn't want to do, but based on how good this Obi-Wan Kenobi turned out, Probably going to see myself picking up more of the prequels as they come out. Speaking of coming out, uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi is now out. You don't have to wait for this guy to show up. Uh, most online places have this guy stocked right now. I picked this one up over at the folks over at Alter Ego Comics. Uh, personally, it's my go-to place when I pick up my six scale figures and many of my collectibles I pick up from their site. Their customer service is some of the best I've seen online. And in cases of six scale figures like Obi-Wan Kenobi here, you can't beat the fact that uh, Alter Ego Comics is one of the few online companies that when you order your six scale figures, they actually double box it. Basically what that means is instead of just simply using the brown mailer box that Hot Toys ships in normally, that can often, and I've had this happen myself, uh, storms when it got raining, when it was raining and wet outside, my brown mailer box has gotten damaged on a couple of figures, uh, probably about three or four figures I've had in my collection. Luckily, nothing was damaged to the figures themselves, but you really don't want damage done to the actual boxes. And that actually caused damage to the box on the inside box, the actual Hot Toys box itself, also got a little bit of that water damage. So all three go comics, one of those reasons why I use them so frequently is the fact that they use double boxes. So basically they would pack the brown mailer box inside of a larger box and then they put a whole bunch of, of packing materials in there as well, just to make sure that everything arrives to you exactly the way you would want and doesn't have any water damage. No to water damage. And also, they all also offer free shipping on many of their six scale figures, so you can't beat that at all. If you are interested in picking up Obi-Wan Kenobi or any one of the six scale figures that they have currently in their inventory, the folks over at Alter Ego Comics also have offered you guys a coupon code of SPOT15. SPOT15 saves you guys $15 on your minimum purchase of $150 or more. It's one coupon per household, but if you are interested in picking up Anakin 
uh, Skywalker, which I still want to pick up. Or if you want to pick up Obi-Wan Kenobi based on this review, Spot 15 will save you guys $15 off your purchase of $150 or more. So basically, Obi-Wan Kenobi is more than $150. You'll save $15 right off the bat. Can't beat that at all. Today, we were having a look at the new released Hot Toys. This was Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, and this was a very nice Obi-Wan Kenobi. If you managed to pick up this figure for yourself or based on this review and this review alone, let me know down below what you guys think of this figure. Is this a win from Hot Toys? Or is it a fail? I always like reading your comments down below. If you guys also want to go back and have a look at some of my other Hot Toys reviews, there's a playlist specifically for Hot Toys. And stay tuned. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications because we're going to have a whole bunch of six scale figure reviews coming up in future videos. Thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you guys next time.